We're now going to see what happens when we connect multiple cells together. Now we can connect them together in series where the positive of one is connected to the negative of the other or we connect them in parallel where the positives are connected and the negatives are connected. First we'll do series. The Science Supply Catalog sell these um, D-cell holders that are really easy to um, put together. Here are two cells in series. The voltage of two in series, 3.15. We add a third in series. The voltage of three cells in series, 4.75. Can you make a prediction what four cells in series would be? Four in series gives us 6.34 volts. So what happens to the voltage when we put cells in series? Well, the voltage adds up. 1.6 for 1, 3.2 for 2, 4.8 for 3, and 6.4 for 4 when they're approximately 1.6 volts apiece. If we were considering them to be 1.5 volts apiece, we'd have 1.5, 3, 4.5, and, and 6. So our values go along with that. So why would we put cells in series? We do it to increase the voltage. We can also use these cell holders to put our bulbs in parallel they'll snap together so that we have two cells in parallel. The positives are connected here, the negatives are connected here. When I put my meter on, I get 1.56 volts. 1.56. It doesn't matter where you place the meter as long as the positive's on the positive side and the negative is on the negative. So that's 1.56 volts for two. We'll put three of them. Still 1.56 volts. And if we put a fourth one in parallel, We still get 1.56 volts. So you might think, why would we put cells in parallel? If the voltage stays the same in parallel, why would we do it? Well, putting cells in parallel effectively makes them last longer. Two cells in parallel give us essentially twice the materials, twice as much acid, twice as much um, metal so that the reaction should last twice as long. Now we can also put cells in what's called combination when they're series and parallel. Here are two cells in series with two branches. Now we have to use an alligator clip wire to connect the positive end to the positive end and another alligator clip wire to go negative to negative. So this is a combination of two parallel branches with two cells in series in each branch. When I check the voltage here, I get 3.17. Three point one seven, no matter where. So effectively, putting two cells in series, a 1.6 and a 1.6, gives us 3.2. Adding another 3.2 in parallel doesn't change the voltage, but it would make it last twice as long. We can add a third branch. I'll take two more D cells. Put them together. I need two more alligator clip wires to connect positive to the positive and the negative to the negative.
And when I check the voltage of this, it should still only be 3.2. So I get 3.17, 3.17. What if we have, instead of two parallel branches of two, what if we have two parallel branches of three cells? Now, three cells in series, 1.6, 1.6, 1.6, 6, would give us 4.8 volts. When we put another row of three in parallel with it, it shouldn't change the voltage because adding cells in parallel doesn't change the voltage. So we should still get around 4.8 volts. 4.72 is what it's reading. 4. Point, it's fluctuating 4.72. So whenever we put cells in combination where there's series with parallel branches, the voltage of the battery is the voltage of any one branch where they add together in series. Adding another branch doesn't change our voltage. So having these six cells with two rows of three gives us the same voltage as just three would be, the 4.8 volts, but it would last twice as long. We also um, put cells in parallel because of the current that they can supply. Any one cell has a maximum amount of current that it can deliver. When you put cells in parallel, then their currents can add together. So a, a branch of two can give us twice as much current as one single branch can. And if we had a third row, we could get three times the current because each row would supply current.